What's up, spectators? Welcome back to another episode of Professor Layton and the Azran Legacy. Last time, we finished up on the island of Sangrio. We got the Aura Egg. Now it's time to move on. Why don't we pick either the jungle or... Oh, we have three left. Just kidding. Okay. Why don't we go with jungle? According to what we discovered in the Azran Dome, there ought to be an egg around here. It looks so tropical and green. It's going to be boiling out there, isn't it? And have you seen how thick the jungle is? How are we ever going to find a tiny little egg in the middle of all that? Dense as it may be, Luke, your keen eye must have caught a glimpse of the small village amongst the foliage, no? A village? Oh, well, I did spot a clearing, but it was just full of enormous mushrooms. Indeed, and I find it unlikely that they'd grow to such size naturally. One should be wary of making assumptions, though. You're right, Professor. We should investigate and see for ourselves. Indeed, whether this hypothetical village exists or not, we'll find our answer around a hundred yards north of here. Just look at all these fabulous colors. I'm sorry, but you'll have to spare me a few minutes for my photo album. It must be difficult to live in such a remote place. I must confess, I didn't think we would encounter such a vibrant settlement as this. It's not even marked on the map. Almost as though it were some kind of lost paradise. I think I prefer a less... Pongy? Pungy? I don't really know what that word is. Paradise. Quiet. Now, I'd like to speak to that young man over there. He may help us find the egg before our nostrils seal up in protest. This is a real brain scratcher. Ho ho, no? Uh. Oh no, my hair, it's got me. It's eating my hand. Excuse me, crazy person. We were wondering if you could assist. It's eating me alive. What, you don't get it? Ah, I don't have time for this. It's almost sundown. Well, that's not exactly how I foresaw that conversation going. What on earth was he doing? Maybe that's just a normal way for people to act in this village. I don't think that's a normal way for people to act anywhere, Aurora. There's a lady over there. If at first you don't succeed... That, that's... That's laughter. I just did laughter. What, what? What is that funny looking thing on your head? Ah, good day, madam. If you're referring to this gentleman's hat, it's actually considered to be a rather suave item of clothing. No, no, not the hat. I'm talking about what's on your head. I don't believe there's anything on Professor Sycamore's head. Are you quite sure? Yes, yes, of course I'm sure. Oh dear, my sides are splitting. It's your hair! What's with those funny little bunches? They're so curly, like piggy tails. Oh, look at that murderous face! Time to die! Number 45, Piglet Racing. These adorable little piglets, piglets are about to take part in a race, but they won't be able to start until they're lined up in correct traps, as indicated by the numbers on their backs. The little piggies are scared of being moved around on their own, so you'll need to pick them up two at a time. Ooh, these ones are pretty tricky. Let's see. Ooh. This is gonna be a bit of trial and error. Okay, I see how it works. So we gotta move, let's see. Need to move the one first eventually. Something like this, for example. And then... This... Wait, that, that took five Let's seconds! 
puzzles are a tonic for the mind. Oh, that was easy. That was fantastic. You're high on the hog. Whatever that means. You got a new dress-up request. All right, all right, I've calmed down now. No need to get your knickers in a twist. How do you know what knickers are when you're on this island? Anyhow, welcome to our humble home of... Fongi. Um, am, 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 Anita. We don't usually accept outsiders, but I think we can make an exception for you lovely people. While I can't say I appreciate the slight against my hair, I admit this place is fascinating. And the name, very evocative. We haven't introduced ourselves. Desmond Sycamore, archaeologist. It's a pleasure. Herschel Layton. Like Professor Sycamore here, I also work in the field of archaeology. I see that the allure of puzzles pervades even the most remote of regions. Ah, well, puzzles are a bit of a trend around here. Don't be too surprised if someone suddenly springs one on you. That you choose now to be the moment to warn us about that is something of a puzzle in itself. Listen, I'm really sorry about laughing at you. It's just, I completely forgotten how curly a man's hair could be. I see. The people of Fongi do seem to sport a rather particular hairstyle, I must say. If anyone starts giving you a rough time about being here, just tell them, Amanita let you in. That'll sort them. You kept a level head and solved my puzzle, even after I got in your hair. And such wonderful hair, too. For that, I'm grateful, for Professor Pigtails. Sycamore. Excuse me, Amanita, but we have a favor to ask, if you don't mind. We're looking for a small, egg-shaped stone marked with engravings. Have you seen it? Sure, I've seen it. Ugh. Go straight ahead and you'll come to the grand stage. It's right there. The grand stage, you say? Thank you for your help, Amanita. You've been most kind. Not a problem. Besides, I'm looking forward to seeing your performance. Oh, nothing, nothing at all. Go on ahead and you'll see for yourself. Oh. Oh, puzzle. What a marvelous flower. I don't recall ever having seen such a species. Ooh, how exciting! I think I'll have a few snaps. All this talk of flowers reminds me of a puzzle. Would you care to try your hand at it, Emmy? <laughs> 60 Picarats! Whoa! Oh, one of these again! Okay. This family's pet goats, yes, yes, I remember how this works. Wait, actually, hold on. Blocks flowers can be rotated. They don't want two flowers of the same color. Right, okay. Well, I guess here we go. Got it! Set him up and knock him down! Huh, that was a cinch! No, that took so long. <sighs> this really is a truly remarkable flower. And so photogenic! I can't wait to get these developed. Okie dokie, let's move on. They've gathered quite the crowd here. I presume this is the grand stage that Amanita spoke of. Everyone looks really excited. And look at all the decorations. They are quite striking. I would wager that there is some sort of traditional festival taking place. 
That's just what I was thinking, Professor. Ho ho, I'm sure. It's true. I worked it out from, you know, what's going on around us. Well, that's very perceptive of you, Luke. Perhaps you can tell me, then, what might the reason for the festival be? Oh, well... Don't worry, Luke. At this precise moment, nor can I. Let's just observe the festi- uh, the festivities a little, shall we? Don't you lie to me again, boy. There's the man we saw at the entrance. What's he doing? This guy looks familiar. Hey, Chief! Coming up with this routine's been a real brain scratcher. A brain scratcher, see? I don't get it. No, I don't see. What are you getting at, boy? Okay, how about this? Oh no, my hair! It's eating me! See? It's like my hands being eaten by my hair. Execute him! I don't see what you're on about and you're starting to get on my nerves. This festival's been going on for days now, and all these acts have been going right over my head. Get off the stage! I can feel my lumbago acting up again. Oh, come on, Chief. A little smirk never hurt anyone. Why don't you give it a try? Oh, what's the point? I've gone through all my best material, and you won't even raise an eyebrow. It's no use. No use? Chezzy love, you're not trying hard enough. Just think of something to really grab his attention. But Chief Morrill's been like this for weeks now. Even if I went back up there and fell flat on my face, that stage would still be a laughter-free zone. Oh, cheer up, love. Life's a bed of roses, and they come with thorns to boot. You gotta be thick-skinned. What peculiar people. Are they involved in some kind of contest? If I had to guess, I'd say they're trying to make the village chief laugh. So it would seem, Luke, and I certainly can't fault them for their efforts. But surely this ritual has some bearing on the Aura Stone, does it not? Let me sip some coffee here, one second. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Hazelnut. Ah, so good. Ah, it's so good! I don't think so. It just looks like a party to me. Then why does he have it around his neck? Look, Professor! It's the egg! Yes, I'm looking, my boy. Our esteemed chief does indeed seem to be in possession of the egg. He doesn't look like the sort of person who just let us have it. Luke, at times like this, a gentleman must always remain positive. It can't hurt to ask. The jill- uh, the jillage. Uh, the village chief of Fongi steadfastly refuses to so much as smile, no matter how much the locals try and entertain him. A festival with the aim of making him laugh has been going on for days now. Why won't he laugh? Grr! Think you can barge right in front of me? Not a chance. Oh, I see what your game is. Here I am putting my heart and soul into my work for the village, and you think you can just come along and steal my thunder. What do we do? We were simply hoping to obtain an audience with your chief to discuss the possibility of a trade. Knew it. You gotta be that beady look in your eyes. Well, you, sir, will not be skipping your way down the queue. Not you, not anyone. Got it? Oh no, really, we were just watching the festival. We don't want to take part. Not so hasty, Luke. If we can make the village elder laugh, is it not possible that he might be willing to part with the egg? Oh, good thinking, Professor. In that case, yes. We'd like to skip our way down the queue. Sure, that's great. Except I already told you, no, I'm not having it. Oh, right. Professor, I guess not everyone here is as friendly as Ama Amanita. Mm. Hold on a sec. Did you just say Amanita? What's she got to do with this? 
As a matter of fact, Amanita was the gracious lady who directed us here. So she's given you the special treatment, eh? Can't win, can I? <laughs> Only wanted my turn. Just because I look angry doesn't mean I want to be. That was easy. Looks like we have our chance now, Professor. Let's talk to Chief Morel. Just a moment, Luke. As gentlemen, it won't do to act arrogantly in the face of tradition. We must approach this carefully in the appropriate manner. Alright, so how do we do that? What's going on? Just a dash of preparation before the big performance. Now, after you, Luke, with aplomb. Quack, quack. How did he not laugh from that? Don't give up, you two. I admire their courage. I, for one, could not do whatever it is they're doing. Luke is making a brave attempt to blur the boundaries of man and beast. Ah, cracking. The chief must be enjoying this. Or not. No luck, it would seem. It's a disaster. We throw all this comedy gold at him, and he won't even give us a grin. Something's definitely not right. I take it your elder wasn't always this less-than-sunny disposition. No, and we haven't a clue what's changed him. He used to be the life of the party, but now he acts as if he's turned toxic. <laughs> Our stalwart opponent stood his ground this time. Perhaps a crab impersonation would have more charm. I got right up close, pulling all sorts of faces at him, and still not even a titter. Well, never mind. It was a gallant effort, nonetheless. You're up next, Professor Sycamore. Maybe your hair will do the trick. It certainly made Amanita crack up. Well, rather than relying on my fashionable hairstyle, I thought I'd have a shot at some good old British comedy. A bit of dry humor for that wet blanket. That should cheer up Mr. Morell. You tell jokes, Professor? Well, uh, good luck then. Professor Sycamore's cutting wit may be just the solution to our comedic dilemma. Just wait and see. What is that sickly sweet smell? Is there a fruitcake somewhere around here? I believe the scent you've detected is my cologne. My name is Desmond Sycamore, and I'll, 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 and I'd like to tell you a little joke in exchange for that egg. Go on. Once upon a time, there was a family of deer in a forest, a mother, a daughter, and a son. The mother deer was renowned for baking delicious cakes, and she would make them for all the other animals in the forest. Everyone talked about what a lovely family they must be, so kind and giving. One day, though, the mother deer caught a cold, so she asked the son to go out and deliver the treats in her place. The son agreed, picked up a basket filled with goodies, and left the house. His first stop was a house belonging to a family of rabbits. The rabbit family had never met the boy, but they welcomed him in, saying that, knowing his mum, he must be a lovely boy indeed. They sat down, and to the rabbit's surprise, the young deer began to scoff up all the cakes right in front of them. He then proceeded to smash up their home before darting off shouting and screaming. Shocking behavior! Needless to say, the animals of the forest learned an important lesson that day. You shouldn't judge a book. A buck! By its mother! Wise words. Didn't you say you had a joke to tell me? Well, you see, that bit at the end was the joke. It's a witty play on a common idiom. Witty? What was witty about it? And here I had my hopes up because you smelt a bit like my favorite pudding. This guy's clearly a moron. I say just take him out and take the egg and get the hell out of here. Perhaps these bumpkins aren't sophisticated enough to comprehend my wit. I sense a storm brewing within the professor. I'm not surprised. It can't be a good feeling to have your joke fall flat like that. Anyway, this is like trying to get blood from a stone. Let's head back to the village square and think things over.
How about we put on a play next? A real feast for the senses. Do you think that would get the chief to crack a smile? The senses. Of course, the chief did something rather extraordinary. He could distinctly smell Professor Sycamore's scent. In this simple fact alone, there may lie a significant clue. First someone laughs at the side of my hair, then someone else tells me I smell like a cake. Even a saint's patience only lasts so long. In any case, we should redouble our efforts. There must be more to this than meets the eye. Agreed. The villagers may disclose some vital information to us yet. But with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here, so stay tuned for the next one, and have a lovely day. Bye-bye!